things about Garland that are so amazing and astonishing and that would inspire, I hope, all Queenslanders to try to find out more about him is that this man did things in his lifetime that would fill an ordinary person's lifetime three or four times over. The main thing, of course, is that he is the architect of Anzac Day, but more than that, he was a humanitarian. And he pushed his own agenda right through 50 years in holy orders. He had no time to waste. There's not too many clerics can say that their brief extends beyond what's in the best interest of their own parish. He saw it bigger and he worked to that end. I became acquainted with Canon Garland uh, reading records in the St Nicholas Russian Orthodox Cathedral. This particular clergyman, Anglican clergyman, had stretched out his hand in friendship to a group of dispossessed and displaced refugees at a time when the Russian community was regarded with huge suspicion. He helped foster their uh, religion by giving them a place to have their services. He went on and did the same thing with the Greeks. The idea for him was that the Orthodox churches of the world and the Church of England as it was, and even the Roman Catholic Church at the time, would one day put aside all their silliness and come together as one single Christian church. And he saw a practical way of achieving that is to make sure you foster this toehold that the Orthodox Christians had in South Brisbane. Afterwards, well, very soon afterwards, I realised that he was also, well, firstly, he was uh, the architect of Anzac Day. You start, of course, 10th of January 1916 at the old exhibition grounds at the, uh, the hall there now, which is the old museum, and the public meeting where on that one night, the community coming together rallied the people of Brisbane to say, we need to commemorate what those guys did at Gallipoli. It says, right, if you trust with me and work with me, we can take this to a national level. This is a moment for Australia to commemorate just what it has lost collectively. So by 1916, he'd already been penciled in as the person who could bring off a statewide and then nationwide commemoration of the fallen. Who are you gonna call? You're gonna call Canon Garland. That was his particular gift. It went from there to every town and village and shire in the whole state of Queensland. It went interstate. He was writing like a, a, a man possessed almost with the zeal, the missionary zeal that only someone imbued with the, the spirit that he had to reach every mayor as, as far as he could go. In his format, they found something I could live with this. I think if we ask our committee, none of us are going to feel that it's overly Church of England. It's not going to feel overly Catholic. It's not going to do other than be the civic part. He structured Anzac Day as a secular religious celebration. He made it so that all faiths, and even those that do not have any faith, can still think and remember those sacrifices. The important part of that is that it can't be uh, possible to become national except with a garland. Socially, we were discussing this thing and how unfair it was that a man of such caliber would be virtually forgotten. We were indignant about it and Paul Noskov basically, he got his friends together he said, right, we're now a society, let's do something about it. The mission of the society as it's evolving has always been to start with, let us get a memorial to this man who was the Anzac Day architect. So we had federal grant money and then we had to chase down some extra money from sponsors. So those people uh, are very important to us. They've always been very important. It's just amazing that they would come on board so quickly. Uh, and then, of course, we ran concerts and we ran events, uh, hoping that people would give us donations to, just to be building awareness as well. And along the way, Canon Garland Place was announced by the Lord Mayor. 
Now in that moment of announcing it officially to a bank of television cameras, the access we found ourselves able to have that day when we showed the, the tomb of Canon Garland to the Lord Mayor and expressed the panic that we had. Look, we, we need to put this memorial up. We've got the makings of it. It could go on a private space, but that wouldn't really do it enough honour. And do you have any thoughts about putting it in a public place? And we'd already discussed that with the local member Alan Abrams in the local councillor and she said well why don't you look at three possibilities she gave us three locations for public land and uh, one, of the, one of them was here at St Mary's so then we started to look at the records and why would it be linking with St Mary's and it was obvious that Canon Garland was our next door neighbour in terms of parish terms he was, used to live on Rivers Terrace uh, just up the road and then we spoke with Canon Gary Harch who was uh, the rector here at uh, St Mary's and he was just so helpful and wished this memorial to happen and, and wanted it to happen so uh, then we just needed the approval. Thankfully we had Dr Rill Henwood. Her work in bronze and in stone is, is beyond beautiful it's, and it's a centrepiece of that in bronze which deserved the best possible vantage point. She's been marvellous for this, this society. You know, being a sculptor of her, her ilk is, uh, it's almost unreal to think that somebody can have such talent. So we consulted with her right from the start about what could this be. And in the end, her great design flair allowed for a wall. It's got a wonderful feel like the stone that's across the way at St Mary's Church. It's made of Brisbane tough, the same rock that the whole city of Brisbane is built on. It's almost as if it's sprung out of the bedrock of Brisbane in a space that was important and appreciated and, and lauded by Garland himself. He lived up the road at some point at Kangaroo Point. That was where the rectory was. There were so many things that were unlikely but came together. What I'd like to think the memorial represents to Queensland is a small tribute to one of their very own. There was a part of Queensland here that through an amazingly passionate Queenslander in Cannon Garland went further than just the exhibition hall at Bowen, Bowen Bridge Road. So uh, while we started with the concept of building the memorial, it was always in the background to foster the awareness of Cannon Garden. So when, once we've built the memorial, we do have a new mission. That's to continue and develop that awareness. The way I personally like to think of it, we are building three memorials. One is actually the uh, physical one, one on the wild world web, and the most important one in the minds and hearts of the people of Australia and hopefully New Zealand. One we have achieved, but the other two need to be continually tended to. When we do leave the society to do other things, I hope that there will be people who will come in and keep pointing the way for you know, other people. This is Australia's history.